your eye in new papers and QT. You could find a lot of debate between two kinds of framework over the internet. And you could so also find a lot of debate about C to C++ too. But in fact, QT is not only using C, uh, C and C++ development, it could also use for JavaScript and Python for the development. But people probably know, don't know that uh, the first year of publish of QT is synced as JavaScript. The, the, the A is totally the, uh, is the, uh, is the same. It's very interesting. But at this moment, at uh, one year of 2000, um, both of the solutions isn't very really powerful yet. Um, for example, the JavaScript. What, we, uh, what, uh, you, you, uh, what people usually use is just for to handling inline event callback, like handling the form verification, or, jump, uh, or ju just doing some simple checking or some uh, simple interactive effect. Why? Because at this moment, the mainstream technology is server-side rendering, and people are still using table for layout. So everything about content, providing content, is the duty of the server side. And the more popular choice of CGI at this moment is PAL. Uh, PHP is growing, but still not uh, very popular yet at this moment. And of course, you could not find anything like Node.js at this moment. So uh, in, in uh, 2000, uh, at the same time, Qt has reacted its uh, 3.0 version. It's not only used for uh, desktop development, it could also use for embedded, uh, embedded, uh, embed, embedded device. It comes with a user interface designing, uh, designer tools. In fact, this kind of tools uh, allow you to uh, create user interface by J and job. It's very popular in, uh, for desktop, but not, it's quite rare in web development. So uh, Microsoft having this kind of tools for over 10 years already at this moment. So about uh, 2000, Qt had created a standard uh, which is comparable with uh, uh, Microsoft. So uh, in uh, one year 2000, web and desktop development are completely different. The tools and then the experience will be uh, is, uh, is different, skill set, no matter what. But as more people is getting more co uh, is getting connected by uh, the internet, the demands of a more powerful work is needed. So people trying uh, to make uh, make it more powerful. For example, Google they make a tool called a Google Web Toolkit, where you allow you to compile Java into JavaScript. Um, at this moment, it's a very interesting feature because many people they just hate JavaScript. They think that JavaScript is very terrible to write and very difficult to write for large application. You don't even find an import statement at this moment. You could only import JavaScript by HTML. The people, they prefer to include another source by JavaScript, but it's not possible at this moment. So in the same year, JQ will come out. Um, I would say many people, they would think that JQ had already invented the JavaScript because at this moment, the function of JavaScript is just too limited. And finally, they people finding a way to make a uh, finding a finding a way to uh, writing a JavaScript application. They found that JavaScript is more powerful than expected. So uh, people try to make more framework about JavaScript. Um, as you could see, no matter is the past, a person, and future, that more JavaScript uh, framework is coming out. Yeah, jQuery is not uh, is not. It's not in, it has invented the, we invented the JavaScript, but it's not enough. People make a lot of different kind of things. Low input statement, that I make a, uh, then people make a library called that require.js. They, uh, the developer, they don't just wait for the browser to support the latest feature. They create their own tools to overcome all the problems they have. So therefore, they make a lot of uh, different kind of tools in uh, it's making. Um, in the similar time, uh, there, uh, Nokia acquired uh, Qt, uh, uh, Qt from uh, Chotac and changed the license from GPL to LGPL. That means people could use Qt to write commercial software without paying, uh, paying any money. Sorry. Yeah. So it made a big change to the community of Qt. And moreover, deep to the support of Nokia, Qt is, uh, started a new project. They want to create a new uh, program language called the QML. Probably they have referred to uh, HTML as an example. It uh, is based on JavaScript with a declarative syntax to declare user interface. First, I show you a demonstration. Um, that is a uh, This is a, a UI component uh, made up by QML. 
you could see that there are some uh, program code there, and this uh, is based on JavaScript. I could run it by external viewer. <coughs> Um, that is a QML to show in a code here. It is already one way. Yeah, and I could modify it. Okay. Oh, the screen is the screen is a bit difficult to show it. Okay. Anyway, I just type here. For example, I could uh, configure the, the animation. Um, okay, well, I would like to try to make this gain from one to three, and the look count is infinity. Okay, then I save it. What will happen? Okay. Sorry, is this not working? Why? I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yes. Live demonstration is always have some some problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm rich. The property scaling. Why is not working? No, no, it's, it's working. If it's not working, we'll come in syntax error. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. There's some problem I could not have check. So, okay, back to the uh, back to slide first. Um, yeah. So, uh, at this moment, there's a slogan from QT. They, uh, they have a, a story saying that I'm a programmer, I'm a designer. They, will, uh, they show that how a designer could cook the QML by their own. Therefore, that means that you could have a faster mm -hmm. way for software development because everything it could be pre-wheeled immediately, with, even without compiling the software. So when come to the 2010, web and desktop development are getting closer because the JavaScript is also come. Many of them they do compatible JavaScript. They have something like a, a, a another way for the import statement. Yeah, but they have a common challenge. Um, what's that? Is the MVC? Um, it is a concept you must learn for to write GI application. It uh, instead of uh, wasting uh, having a monster class to have everything inside, you should break down your program into smaller pieces. For example, you should have a real component for rendering the UI, a model component to provide in the data, and controller is uh, in uh, between real and model uh, uh, to, to make the collaborator. So that therefore you can have a better code architecture and easier to maintenance. However, if MVC is not really a design pattern, many people say that MVC is a design pattern, but sorry, it's not. Be why? Because it has different idea and different kind of implementation method behind the idea. It don't even have a solid way of programming API suggested for you to implement the MVC. So MVC is just a concept, a principle, but not a design uh, principle. Let's take example. The MVC we are mentioning, uh, mentioning now, in fact, in fact, is not the original idea. The idea is different. Currently, when we're talking about MVC, the controller is the bridge between real and uh, model. But the original idea is not. I call it the model one in the left. That's the original proposal uh, of MVC. It, the controller take, uh, handle the user input and then manipulate the model, and the model will update the view. That is different in the model two. But now people usually they just talk about model two, we will not mention model one anymore. 
Uh, I would say that uh, when you're talking about MVC firmware, there are two kinds of MVC firmware. The first one is that you have an explicitly declared controller. You, have, you will have a function say set controller for something. The, uh, the relation between view and controller is one one mapping. Many uh, firmware, they can uh, they can they are MVC because they have this kind of API. But in fact, more MVC firmware, they don't have a class called a controller. Instead, what controller is? They install an adapter between view and model. They listen from the view and listen from the model and then providing the data. The what controller is, is just uh, installing the adapter between them. That's the, I think it's more popular way at this uh, way now. But MVC could not solve every problem because it don't have a solid way, uh, a solid suggestion for your solution. So people, they try to invent more kind of solution. For example, uh, model view, view model, MVVM. It is a solution suggested by Microsoft uh, to use with their uh, firmware. Um, they paste, uh, instead of uh, MVC, they replace a uh, controller by a uh, component called a real model. Real model, it read data from the model and then pass the data to the real. It will transform into the data needed by the real because usually the data model could be very large, but your real only show part of the data. So that it will do a filter or conversion to fit for the real. And then no matter, and then the real will get the data, full data bounding, and once they got a user event, they will send the command to real model, and then the real model will update the models. It is a much better solution, I would say that. And many firmware, they already implement this kind of solution. For example, AngularJS, a popular firmware in uh, JavaScript. They, uh, it, can, it is a MVC firmware, but in fact, the controller in uh, Angular is just a real model. It, it don't have any different than a real model. Yeah, so it is a uh, very popular choice, and Qt work, uh, work with this kind of solution very well. But there are a problem of MVC. It's about the event form. For example, it's not weird to find that when a mo when a, when you got a uh, user event from real, you need to update several model, and the update of model will trigger the update on another model and trigger the update for another real. Yeah, it's the flow is very complicated. It's just leaping a game of pong that. You, uh, you, you hit the ball and then the ball will come back later. And the, uh, the cook checking is really terrible. Yeah, because uh, they will have, yeah. Let's show an example. <laughs> okay, um, let's say you have a, in a game, you, uh, you, have a uh, you have a cat. Somebody want to cut off the leg and then they try to call the remove function from the leg wheel. Here? But a leg cannot remove itself because it's owned by the body. So what could you do? Hey, cat, please remove uh, your leg. Yeah, okay. Because it's a programmer, they will obey your order. So they will try to, uh, you need to uh, emit a signal called a uh, remove a request, and then the body will try to call the remove leg uh, function. It's quite common. And then on the same time, probably you emit another version is the leg remove one, but it's not finished. Though. Maybe another uh, thing that if you remove the leg, the, uh, the cat should, uh, should, should mail, there's, um, there's, uh, there's uh, some response to that. And then it may have another action, it's called uh, when you have the mail signal, the owner should come to pet it, uh, pet it no matter what is, uh, what is happening to the cat. So as you could see that uh, in traditional MVC, this, this, uh, Signal propagation could be far away from the source to the final uh, re uh, final receiver. In this example, it come uh, the signal is sent to uh, four times here and come along. So when you're trading a bug, usually you need to uh, call several compiler to make sure that everything working. Otherwise, you may probably you will book something. Yeah. So it's very troublesome in MVC. So in 2015, uh, like, uh, Facebook reacted a framework called VS. On the same time, they propose a new architecture called the Fush. Um, for me, it's, uh, in fact, the uh, Fush is not really a new idea. They have a uh, architecture design called the CQRS, which is uh, mentioned for, for, for many years already. I can't, I can't remember which year it's raised. Up. In the Fush architecture, it proposes a few components. For example, they have a real component here. It is exactly the same as the MVC. It just rendered the data. And they have a, a, more, a store which is similar to the model, but the controller <coughs> is repeated by action and dispatcher. 
Um, the model is similar to the MVC model, but uh, there's some difference here. First of all, the, uh, it is uh, read only from the view. In traditional MV, uh, every VM or MVC, the model could be updated by the view directly, but in fast framework, it's not allowed. What you could do is sending an action. The action is in fact a message telling that what I want to do in a um, uh, more like a command, the command in CQRS, and then it will send through the dispatcher. And then dispatcher will tell store, hey, somebody want to update you or ask you to update. So, therefore, the update, uh, the QA and update are separated. It is very uh, important concept about Fast. When, because uh, when people talk about Fast, it just tells you that if you use Fast, the event falls in unidirectional. You always from uh, from the view, action, dispatcher, store, and then come back to view in a single way. But MVC is not. But if you just tell, that, uh, tell, tell people, uh, the first thing can achieve this. So many people, they won't understand. So I prefer to talking about uh, QS and update separation. It is a more easy to explain about the idea. So when I learn about this framework, I have an idea come up. Is this suitable for desktop application development? So I firstly I try to clone the API. I just clone the API uh, of the official first project, and then try and then I try to share my experience uh, on the internet and telling people, hey, can it solve your problem? Can it make your architecture more simple, more easy to use? However, the the office, official first implementation is just too simple. It only solved a few problem. It couldn't solve all the problem. So I need a more a random architecture in order to, uh, to solve all the problem. But the problem is that I don't know which implementation I should follow. When you're surfing about first implementation on the internet, maybe of a chanty or even more architecture, you could find that. And each architecture, they solve different, uh, different problems. So at that moment, I have a hard time that which architecture should I follow to implement. That's really uh, it's a hard problem for me. So I just add on the problem and then just create my own solution. <laughs> so and then in the um, year of 2016, I have the first version released. Start. And so, uh, I instantly I got a lot of uh, questions and query about, uh, about the solution. The first question is, can I use React in Qt? Many people ask about a question, but I would say, I'm sorry. <laughs> the concept of React and Qt is totally different. It's, it's just like asking, can I use React in AngularJS? Yeah. <laughs> that, that is the same, because the concept of React is, is quite different than, the, than other solutions using MVVM solution. Yeah. And then the second inquiry is that, can I use Redux? Redux is a modified fast architecture. Um, in fact, I would say then the concept of Redux is more complicated than, uh, than the first itself. So it, it, I will be very difficult to explain the whole idea here. So I just briefly explain about this architecture. Basically, it's through something called the Redux to update the model. And the Redux is a pure function. It is an important concept because in uh, object-oriented programming, we usually don't emphasize anything called a pure function. A pure function always returns the same output for a same set of input. That means it don't have anything that will make random behavior. It always you give a uh, give the same input. It always give the same output. So therefore, it could not do anything like a random value or asynchronous IO. For example, reading a file cannot be made it as a pure function because reading a file may not always return the same content of the file, and sometimes it may come error. The behavior is not deterministic. And they also in, uh, introduced a new component called the middleware to uh, to hand because a pure function cannot do anything like follow IO or randomized string. So they make a new component called the middleware to handle it specially. So I try to port it to QT tools and share my experience on that. Uh, the result is quite good because it solves another problem about the asynchronous IO stuff. But finally uh, after I make a uh, fresh and Redux architecture, I give up uh, on further development about uh, the Redux part because the Redux function is really a functional uh, programming concept and a little bit difficult to implement. In fact, when you're looking for uh, the article of Redux, people will say that for small project, Redux is overkill. Okay, it doesn't really matter. Still, I 
could then have something come up. So one years later, I make a uh, new version of, uh, of the, my first implementation called Quick First, and I have integrated the idea from Redux. First of all, I have middleware. The middleware is only for the file I/O, like camera, dialog, and anything file, and the store become a pure, uh, com a pure, uh, pure component. That means that it don't have, any, it don't call any random, uh, random stuff. It's, it's pure and deterministic. So finally, I got an almost perfect software architecture for my desktop environment. I'm really happy about that. And why I think it's really good. The first one is that it has a perfect separation of view and logic. Because the view component, it don't have any dependency uh, about uh, application logic or system component. It, it keeps data and render it. It's a perfect, a perfect form of a view component. It only depends on store and action, and only send action on user request. So therefore, the development could be faster. Uh, let me show you another example. I wish this one will, lock, will have a problem. Um, the screen is it is a little small to screen. Um, it is a UI uh, the UI kit in a in a very simple application. It take a batch of photo and then to resize it. But it has a lot of com uh, UI component. And this the component here is internal internal about. I make a um, I make a gallery of all the UI all the UI of this application by by real data. Yeah. It gather all the component here because uh, when usually when you using a GUI application, usually you have a, uh, a lot of dependency between uh, different kind of component. It's quite difficult to be decoupled. Up. But in this application, everything is decoupled up and works uh, alone. I could make uh, I could make this period. Yeah. Um, any more I could do? I'm sorry, this more uh, is some entire effect here. Uh, another benefit I have is the application logic. It is as it is safer in store. It is pure and deterministic. Like everything is so it is decoupled from the system component. Because when you are making look, look that's, uh, using when you are making desktop application, sometimes you may need some special uh, API from third party. For example, we if you have experience in making video payer, you know that usually the video uh, sort of the cooked provided by render is extremely difficult to use. Yeah, and then when you and may have uh, some um, license management. Therefore, uh, if you want to separate a, a development environment to compile everything, it's very terrible and very difficult to do so. The, you may stay, spend one or two days to just get the SDK working, but in this uh, architecture. The uh, application logic is, is decoupled from the system controller. I don't need to make anything related to the video payout and anything else. So the development could be faster. And I don't need a more object for writing tests. More object is usually quite hard to make in many situations because you need to sim you need to sim a working software where the behavior is exactly the same. You, people spend a lot of time in writing a more object. But in this film, uh, in this film, uh, I don't really need a more object here because everything is decoupled. And therefore, I make a very fast time in development. After I released the software, I got another inquiry and asking, can you help me to port my application to use your quick fast? It's funny, so how much you will pay? <laughs> I really asked about this question, and the pay is quite good, I will say about it. Yeah. So when many people, they ask, can I earn money from open source project? Sure. Maybe you are not saving the software, but saving a support or a mentorship service is quite profitable. I have already handled a few, uh, few cases already. Yeah, so for me, it's quite good, I think. Okay, that's all I want to present. Any question?
QT mm. because I heard that the, uh, QT there was a like like a uh, is it is that true that QT has a like HTML five front end that that I can use uh, to directly port the old desktop application to the web browser. Um, they have a so, uh, component called a web engine. Probably really nice. Uh, it's some uh, something sim. I could work something similar like to the Electron or the, <coughs> the Chromium version. Yeah. So the answer I would say yes, but you need to have uh, make your own installer. And and the problem is that, uh, for example, if I have a QT application like a KDE application already working on the Linux system and Windows system. And then, is it possible to directly compile it to the to target the web browser platform? Well, browser platform. Also, if you want to run your application uh, on on the browser, you mean run uh, the Qt application on browser? Uh, yes. Um, they are starting a new project called the Web Assembly. Uh, um, Qt Web Assembly port. Uh, what I said is a technology, is a technology for you to compile uh, C or C++ purpose or any language code into a binary format where browser could be understand. So QT they have a technical preview for the uh, web assembly port already. So uh, probably at this moment I could see a lot of example here already. Yeah, but I'm not sure if you have a K, uh, is KDE working on that yet, uh, yet. But I think you could uh, wait until the official release. It's quite amazing and promising, I think. Um, okay, and any more question? I, uh, I'm noting the demonstration. <laughs> okay, no more question, and thank you.